got in late last night. Got in situated in the Airbnb that we're staying in. So getting everything set up this morning. I don't know if you can see it, but the fog is thick. So we'll probably be hanging back a few minutes versus getting out right away. I'm gonna get the muzzle loader loaded up here. And we're in the, the same area to where I took a great Columbia Whitetail a couple years ago with my rifle. And we're actually here last year with the muzzle loader, but had some flight difficulties. So missed opening day and half of the next day and had to do a quick turn. So we're not successful. So we're back again this year and excited to be here because Rob's got some great deer on camera. So hopefully we can spot one of those this morning once the fog lifts. Rafters out on the front side, so until we can see, we'll kind of go in the back here, see if we can maybe get below a little bit of the fog, um, check out some of these back ridges, and see if we can find something, and then wait for the fog to lift a little bit, and then we'll come back out and go after our target hut. But there's a couple good ones in the back too, so we might find them. We'll check cameras while we're back there. along this road and kind of get set up. We saw some deer moving along the bottom. Hopefully they feed up towards us. Their bedding area, Rob says, up the hill. So there's a good chance eventually they come up. The wind's gonna be perfect. One thing I did want to note is that I am using a muzzleloader on this hunt, but here during the rifle season, which makes this combo of using the scope and everything legal, because from past experience, I know I'm gonna get some questions on it. So rifle season, completely legal muzzleloader. That's him. Oh, look at that. There he is. He's broadside. Oh, there he goes. Well, we were cruising this morning because the fog was so nasty that we didn't even go where the target buck was that Rob's been seeing pretty regularly. We came to the back of the ranch and just caught some does moving. And had you seen that giant buck before? One other time. One other time? About a month ago. Yeah, we were just glassing and all of a sudden we were watching these does go and this big buck just came right in the fog. Uh, probably hop in, go check the far corner of this ranch and then hopefully the fog lifts a little bit more see if we can't go see the target buck. Yeah, if it's like this out where he's at, where he's hanging out, we yeah. should be able to find him. Okay. But, um, you know, it was thick right there when we came in. The yeah. thickest, thickest fog we that had. Was, so that was a big buck, though. He, that was that that buck is probably 130s. Yeah, he's he's big. That is solid. Okay, so what was the record deer that you shot with your bow? Uh, 147 and an eighth. 147 and an eighth, and that's number one Columbia Whitetail all time. Doesn't matter the the weapon, right? Yeah, and it, well, and then it was velvet, so there was two percent deduct. So okay. it ends up 144 and an eighth. 144 and an eighth. So. Rob knows he's world record holder for Columbia Whitetail. <laughs> That's why I'm with the guy. We just spotted the big brow time buck. He's up there with a couple of smaller bucks and a bunch of does. He's working this ridge line back left and right. We're gonna use this and try to sneak the problem where he's at. We just gotta to try to find an opening, but he's right here. He's not, he's not going anywhere. We just gotta to try to find the right spot to get set up. Sometimes they come out right here, but this kind of drops off and there's a little valley. They'll come around this side and then what they're doing is they're heading up here and then they bed up. Right here. 
where that doe is. He's gonna fall. Here they go. Range that for me. Is that 150? I can't get it to range. I can't get the fog. 130. I got a 132 below it. I got I, I got them at 150. So he's only like 20 yards behind him and he's feeding that way. Start feeding this way so he's not spooked. Here comes a here comes a buck. I don't know if that's him yet, I just saw a word. There's another one coming behind it. It's a small game, right? That's not him. Yeah. Doe one. Oh, there he comes. That's him. No, no. That's him. He's hit. That worked out perfect. Rob spotted this buck. Oh, actually, how long have you been watching this deer? Uh, about two months. Two months he's been watching this deer, but we were cruising where it's been at the last two months and spotted it with a big group of does and some smaller bucks and hopped out of the truck and kind of played a little game with them. We tried to get up to the right and they spotted us, moved back to the left. We finally got set up here. There's just enough of an opening that we were able to get set up on and smaller bucks came first, then does, and this guy came through and he wasn't going to stop. You tried to stop him, he didn't. And I let go right at the, the last second, hit him and he only ran a little bit over here and went down. So I'm excited to look at this. Yeah. He looks way bigger than what the, tra the trail cam picks did. He's, he's nice. He's got a huge frame on him, probably about as good a frame as you're going to get. Yeah, looks like a stud of a Columbia whitetail. Big body, old buck. Yeah, very old buck, yep. Let's go take a look. All right. Thanks, sir. Oh, that is awesome. That is awesome. Holy frame on that deer. Wow. That is a stud of a Columbia Whitetail. He is. Look at that brow. That is a heck of a Columbia Whitetail right there. Rob has been watching this guy for the last couple of months, but actually the last couple of years. Yep, this is the third year. He has been living in the same area, very distinctive, and never Never really grew any more on this side, but I mean, this is obviously the year. He's an old deer, just great. And this brow tine, like I can't, that is impressive. But Columbia whitetail, one of the smallest subspecies of whitetail, both by range and also body size. I'd compare this body to, you know, really like coos deer, maybe even a little smaller than a coos deer. Yeah, they're, they're real comparable. Yeah, but on their range, so a Columbia whitetail lives along the Columbian River and, uh, Oregon and Douglas County is actually the only county where they're recognized and the only spot that you can hunt them. Just an awesome buck though. Holy smokes. This is actually this is the second Columbia whitetail I've taken with you on this ranch. So the other whitetail we took with a rifle was about a half mile over there on this on the same exact ranch. Definitely got the genetics of it here. Yeah and this is <clears throat> kind of rare. It's all whitetail on this ranch where a lot of them will have Whitetail and blacktail. This is just exclusively whitetail. Yeah. Oh, that is awesome. Another good time in Oregon. Thanks, sir. Congratulations. What a trip. My Columbia whitetail is checked off the list, and not only that, he's the new muzzleloader world record Columbia whitetail. The fog had slowed us down for a bit in the beginning, but it all worked out in the end. Thank you. Hey, congrats. <laughs> congrats to you, too. Awesome. That's hey, awesome. Buck. Well done. Thank you.
Hey everyone, for more information on the North America Deer Slam, make sure to visit markvpeterson.com or visit any of my social channels. Also, check out the Deer Slam maps and each species information at markvpeterson.com.